Hi right, guys, good morning. Friday the 26th of July, just coming up to quarter past eight here uh, in London. And as you can see on my right hand side, the man, the myth, the legend, Mario Draghi, uh, all but confirming uh, we are going to have those rate cuts before he uh, ends his term on October the 31st and he's going to go that whole uh, journey as ECB president without raising rates at all, which is quite remarkable, even going back at least six months ago where we were talking about uh, just before he was going to leave uh, at the end of the summer that he was actually going to raise rates uh, and uh, what a difference six months made. Uh, we'll start by going over the markets and, and just having a, a quick recap of, of things from yesterday uh, and then obviously have a look at uh, some of the news headlines from this morning, uh, what's driving price uh, in what's expected I would say to be a relatively quiet European session uh, before we get to uh, the main point of US GDP numbers, 1.30 UK time. So we're just bringing up the, the Euro chart here uh, and you can see, I mean looking at that you would say absolutely classic ECB meeting where you get a spike one way, reverse or the other and finish pretty much flat. So you could argue Draghi's done an absolutely amazing job on that. Uh, if we glow it down to, to a five minute time frame, the initial uh, headline coming out that there were no rate cuts. So we were going into this meeting 50% priced in from traders that uh, we were going to have that cut. So that was just an unwind of those dovish bets if you like. I'm just going to put this onto a minute chart now where you can see we spiked higher above the R1, above that 24 to 48 hour range uh, and then the, the dovish forward guidance really uh, led to this move lower that they are going to start looking into this QE program. Uh, and um, starting up the asset purchase program yet again. And that did see us drift down pretty much until Draghi walked out. So 1.30, 45 minutes after the initial announcement, Mario Draghi took the, took the stand, if you like, and at the low of the day, 1.33. So three minutes into his speech and pretty much when he started reading the statement as he walked out a tiny bit late, uh, no real talk of rate cuts or policy change at yesterday's meeting or for yesterday's meeting. That saw us push higher, reverse pretty much the whole move in the first few minutes before pushing on, hitting the R2, and since then we did drift lower uh, on that, um, that, that push higher that we had. And then into the back end of the session, we pretty much finished where we started. So you can see here on the, the 12.45, we finished maybe two ticks above, so really well done from Draghi. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the minutes. The minutes will be uh, uh, an interesting release. What did they talk about in that meeting? You know, they're saying there was no uh, policy change talk in there, whether there would be. I think you can see some more uh, or some follow through of some Euro weakness from that. We are just seeing the, the dollar strengthen a touch this morning, not just against the Euro, but the pound. Uh, and you're seeing Euro dollar just come lower and worth from a technical point of view, just being aware on the futures. I'm just going to move this above the calendar, the uh, the camera, sorry, so you can see. 111.70, very key level. We had support initially uh, going back to Wednesday morning, then yesterday morning and afternoon. That would be a key point to, to have marked up. My my personal view on, uh, on the Euro dollar, uh, it didn't quite get up to you know, what would have been a lovely point of, of entry. But I do think over the coming weeks, you're gonna see a continuation uh, of this this uh, overall trend that we're in, just putting this on that 240 chart, a four hourly. We have just been drifting lower. And even going back over the last few months, any uh, potential rally, you're just seeing the dollar bulls come back in. Yes, you've got next Wednesday, the, the Fed announcement, and depending on, on how dovish they are, how their forward guidance comes in will depend on this market uh, going higher or lower. But I think certainly, uh, or not necessarily certainly, but in my opinion over the, the coming weeks and months, we are just going to continue this this push down. And I think 111, uh, the futures and the euro would, would not be too far away, uh, which you can see today we're coming at S2. Whether we could get down there today or not, I would be unsure. It effectively will come in. Uh, to the, those US GDP numbers at 1.30. Elsewhere, the Bund made a new all-time high on that initial spike of the, the no cut, the unwind of those dovish bets. And then you saw a reversal of that move and more. We then pushed down and 
really came back up to finish near the pivot and you could argue now it's business as usual let's continue as if yesterday didn't happen for the bun uh, in turn that did drag down uh, UST notes as well. You can see initial spike from 12.45 before coming lower on that correlated monetary policy move. The DAX similar to the Bund and you had the initial spike before reversing a lot of that. We haven't actually, and you can see here that the DAX just going to go through that uh, increased volume period from the open. The DAX didn't really recover from yesterday afternoon and that move coupled uh, with US stocks coming down at the same time, you can see uh, very correlated across the, the board uh, there for European and US markets. Overnight we did have um, some earnings out uh, from some of the, the larger companies. Alphabet uh, shares rose uh, about 8% after uh, the company reported quarterly results uh, that, um, that eased investors' concerns about the growth challenges facing its Google advertising business. So driven by ad sales, second quarter revenue and earnings beat analysts' expectations. In addition, the world's largest online search and ads firm, unlike number two online ad player Facebook, uh, a day earlier, offered no worrisome guidance about increasing regulatory scrutiny. So we saw, and we can have a quick look over uh, at the NASDAQ here, and we also had um, earnings out of of Amazon as well which slipped and we'll come on to that in a moment but you can see which way the market decided to to take this uh, certainly over the last few years when there's been good and bad news at the same time it's going to go with the, the good more often than not for these stock markets and we had a really strong push higher which helped bring that S&P and the Dow Jones in correlation with it a bit higher rather than the DAX which has obviously still remained uh, lower from yesterday's push so the, the uh, you can see here the Nasdaq back to pretty much where we were uh, before the press conference from, from Draghi yesterday. Uh, obviously the, the tech sector uh, in the S&P benefited a touch as well from there and we have drifted on but nowhere near as much as uh, the Nasdaq. So all good there for, for Alphabet pushing uh, about 8% higher. Conflict for, in confliction there you had um, Amazon who were worse than expected. The first profit miss in two years said income would slump in, the, in that current quarter as the online retailer ramps up spending on one day delivery uh, uh, to spark sales growth. So first uh, miss in two years, it hasn't necessarily worried investors, only drifted down about 1%, which is, is crazy really considering uh, you know the moves that it's been having over the last few weeks and months and years. So only 1% miss on that. Uh, looks as if people may already be interested to, to certainly buy the dip and the stock markets in the US not worry uh, it seems we're yet again in the build up to these earnings they're going to be the worst for XYZ that's all priced in and then unless they're really bad the markets aren't going to blink and it does seem going into to next week that's all put behind us it's going to be um, the, the cut we're all expecting stocks could continue this this push higher into the election and, and Trump will be tweeting happy days so yes Amazon uh, worse than than expected the just going into a, to a bit more detail there the they actually said the company uh, also said its investment in faster shipping was starting to pay off so positive with revenue rising 20 percent to 63.4 billion uh, in the second quarter ending in June that topped an, an, an uh, analysts estimates and the 17% rate of growth that Amazon posted in April. So while shares did fall, there were some positives in there, which of course would have capped price uh, a touch. And you can see here uh, the Nasdaq, well, continuing to, to push on this morning. Quick look uh, elsewhere in the markets, just to uh, have a quick look. I did mention there's a bit of dollar strength and you have seen uh, the, the pound certainly overnight push to this low and worth keeping an eye on this level that we're trading 124.54 in the futures quite a lot of support around this area from uh, well going back to the 23rd so Friday Thursday Wednesday and Tuesday and also back on the 18th last week as well so quite a lot of support around here it was all going okay for the pound yesterday not really too interested in in what was going on and then uh, we had a couple of, of tweets that well a tweet that came out I'm just going to transition over here uh, so Alex Barker just uh, tweeting uh, what M Michel Barnier's email to EU member states uh, were, was, and he was basically calling Boris's statement 
rather combative and basically unnegotiable. This was squawked around, well, you can have a look at the chart and you can guess when it was squawked. It's pretty much squawked bang on 4.30, 4.45, and, uh, and, or actually maybe a bit before that, when we first started coming down, before uh, the sort of European close. And the pound gathered a bit of momentum, or the cable gathered a bit of momentum to the downside. Euro pound pushed higher. Uh, and we have seen a really a continuation of that. Wouldn't necessarily it's all driven from that that headline as such. The uh, the dollar did strengthen a touch yesterday, and we also saw a big technical break in gold, which we'll come on to in a moment. Uh, but worth just keeping a you know an ear to the ground on on what Europe's view on Boris Johnson is, and are they um, going to go into the negotiating table, and are they happy to make changes? Is Boris going to be able to do so? We also had a, a tweet. Um, from Stephen Swinford here, if I just transition my, my charts again, who is just saying that you know Boris is, is out and about, he's hitting the road, and this is what you know Anthony had been mentioning. We were talking about this yesterday. You know he's going to be heading to these uh, these places up north. The uh, you know on Saturday here, giving a speech in Labour seat in Northwest. He's also going to Birmingham over the weekend. He's going around talking up. Uh, the the game, if you like, ahead of what could possibly be his plan of getting that general election in before the 31st uh, of October. It would make sense for him to, to do so, to get some support, to get people to buy into uh, his plan of getting us out by the 31st. And to be honest, the way he was speaking yesterday in, uh, in Parliament as well, was saying we're leaving, 31st, no deal uh, or deal. Uh, you know, none of this, you know, this is not what we want, we're going to do it. Uh, what better way to, to try and get people on side with get, doing a, a bit of a tour? Whether it will work or not, time will tell. Um, I think everyone could, could agree it was a bit of a laugh watching him have a go at Corbyn yesterday. His speech was, was quite interesting. Uh, but just worth keeping an eye on this as well. You know, the more Boris goes round, does his popularity grow? What's going to be the impact then of a, of a general election? You could argue in, in the build-up to uh, this general election gathering speed that the pound would come under a bit more pressure uh, certainly not really looking all too rosy for the conservatives at the moment labor necessarily not necessarily have made uh, any progress over the last few uh, months when they should have but if this general election was to be called cool, more uncertainty and then it will have to price in you know are the conservatives going to uh, take back their mistake from when Theresa May called one back in 2017 uh, if that was to be the case and the Conservatives were to come out on top, well, I think you would see a bit of a pound rally uh, and Euro pound would come lower. You would see Euro dollar at least appreciate a touch as well uh, as he would have more room on that negotiating table. He could go to Europe and go, look what I've done. I can now deliver this this deal. Uh, I can get uh, this all passed through and, and we can go from there. Uh, so worth keeping an eye on, on these couple of things. What One, what Europe is saying uh, about Boris and two, uh, this idea of a general election getting called and he would have to call it before the 31st of October um, and of course as we go into to August next month where you know a lot of a lot of guys are on, on recess you know so it could even be called soon if not maybe you know September but then it, it leaves little time uh, for, for for Boris to go around and, and really rally rally the troops so to say. Uh, going back to, to the chart, so yesterday with, with gold we had a, uh, a technical break and I've been eyeing this up for, for a while and you can see here, just going to put this onto the four hourly chart. Going back, and I'm just going to move this to the other side of my camera quickly so you can see where it starts. Back on the, the end of, uh, of May here, starting on yeah, the 30th, we then had another test on the 17th of July and we were really getting squeezed in each one of these days uh, of the last few uh, weeks and then price finally getting that breakthrough yesterday we've confirmed that that break below we hit what would have been ideally the first sort of target 1414 on the futures uh, and now we're back below that trend line if we were to, to push higher today it would be uh, very interesting to see what happens uh, around that point if it was to happen in the next hour or so that would be coming in around 1426 uh, and we remain obviously some very key resistance up at the top which we just could not break through so price was really getting squeezed in from both directions you got that breakthrough break of that trend line could be key going back to gold certainly uh, from a couple of years ago when you do get these big trend line breaks you can see that it really is strong moves and here 
And I'm just going to start this one uh, from December 2016. We got the break through the 11th of June. And what a push down. I'm not saying that's going to happen now by any stretch of the imagination. But just when gold breaks these trend lines, you can get uh, obviously quite uh, fast moves. Uh, and, and where we close the week will, will be important. Uh, back to some of the, the headlines, or, or lesser headlines, I should say. You had this come out overnight or from yesterday. Spain's Premier vows to avoid snap election despite defeat. This could have been possibly uh, a bigger story. The euro is not biting off it. Um, so yesterday, uh, sorry, yesterday the, the vow to avoid a new general election, which would be the, the country's fourth in as many years and will work to build a new coalition. Uh, which has remained elusive despite two parliamentary votes. It's not enough to really drive price uh, in the euro. It was a bit of a risk to be factored in, uh, but you can see if we look at price now, you would uh, say nothing Nothing has happened from that. Uh, elsewhere, another headline today, not necessarily new news, but Iran test fires medium-range ballistic missile uh, earlier in the week, and the US are now aware of it. What could this mean for, for oil? Because it's not really new news, I would say business is, as usual and let the market tell you what's going on. You can see we are getting squeezed in from both directions. So on a day like today for, for oil, I'm just sitting back and waiting for price to either get above the trend line or below and not necessarily saying we're going to really blast out the gates when that happens on a, on a break of it. Uh, but that's what I would be waiting for, really to look at us to get above well, at the moment, that would be around 56.40 or 56 handle uh, on the dot. So, quick look over uh, the markets right as we're trading now before we have a look at the, the calendar. You can just see, let's put the, the gold on here and the pivots. You can see a bit of dollar strength uh, against the pound, more so pound weakness, you would, you would argue, as euro pound is back up to its high from yesterday. Euro was under a bit of pressure. I would still be keeping an eye on 111.70 on the futures. Stocks in the US certainly seem as though those results yesterday from Amazon of Alphabet have been taken as a positive, so I'd favor for now an upside, unless we were to break one of these trends to the downside, which you can see we're not far away from getting that third test, just above 30.10. Uh, uh, and the pivot. So for now, favour the upside. You're lying in the sand for you know the buyers and sellers above where we're trading. 3016. Bit of resistance here. Previously support. So you can see, similar to oil, it might not be the worst idea just to wait for what price does around these two points between 3010 and the pivot and 3016 uh, as a whole. And like, like I said, with oil, just waiting for price to let you tell you what is uh, is really uh, going on. Moving over to the, the calendar for, for the day, mentioned at the beginning it's going to be quiet, not much coming out uh, at all of interest, not even any speakers. Usually after an ECB meeting you will get source comments that come out. We did have some overnight ECB policymakers see rate cut as done deal in September. Sources, you know, just trying to make sure the market does understand ahead of September that there's going to be a rate cut so there's no surprises. I mean, straight after 12.45, it's 90% priced in anyway. Uh, but certainly today, just maybe keeping an ear out or keeping your, uh, your, your, your tweet decks with the, uh, the search as ECB sources wouldn't be the worst idea, just in case there is any follow-up comments to yesterday's meeting. Uh, as we drift into the afternoon, it's all about US GDP. Uh, and really, once that's done, it could be the, done for the week, to be honest. Uh, expected at 1.8. So you can see that would be the, the lowest for, for quite some time for, from the, the US GDP numbers. So uh, it would you know, down from 3.1% uh, and would post its, uh, yeah, its first decline in, in, in a while. Um, GDP is saying it rose, one, well, analysts reckon it's going to rise 1.8% on an annualized basis in the second quarter, uh, which would be the slowest since 2017. The GDP report, however, is, is unlikely to make too much difference uh, ahead of the, the Fed's decision next week. However, it could obviously have a, an impact on future decisions that they're, they're going to make, uh, and that deta detail will help um, sort of form their opinion on uh, the central banks thinking of uh, whether they're going to follow up with additional easing this year. Uh, so 1.8 expected. So off that 
no real reaction, but you can see the range 1.1 to 2.9 is, is quite big. If it was 1.1, well then suddenly, uh, you know, it's not looking too good and you would see, yes, stocks come down, but then again, a better opportunity to buy on the fact that they're going to have to start cutting a bit more. You would see dollar weakness from this, which I'm sure Donald Trump wouldn't mind too much. Uh, and either way, good or bad number, Trump is, is going to be tweeting. If it's bad, it's going to be, well, look, the Fed have, have caused this. We need to uh, we need to be cutting. If it's really good, you would then talk about how good it is and how much better it could be if the Fed weren't uh, being tight with monetary policy. The reason why we're expecting uh, the 1.8%, the uh, you guessed it, trade. So trade is, is the reason uh, this has been uh, expected to, to be bad. So 1.8 expected, but quite a big range. So something just to, to factor to in there uh, as well. Uh, just a quick look over the markets one more time just to see what's happened following the, the DAX open. And if anything, that 35 minute period from, from the open, uh, 8 o'clock, will, will tell you uh, what is expected from today's morning session. Not much. Probably the, the quietest open, certainly of the week. Uh, that I've seen uh, from Europe. Uh, so I wouldn't be looking to get into aggressive, uh, really, as the market just waits for those US GDP numbers. As usual, any questions, obviously, please uh, do let us know. Uh, but if I don't speak to you uh, throughout the, the day, hope you have a, a great weekend. It seems as though the sun has gone for now, looking very gloomy here in London. Uh, but I think that might be a bit of a, a refreshing change for people after not being able to sleep for a while. But I hope you'll have a, a great weekend. Uh, and I'll catch you all next week.